All right, so the second form is to find and graph the x and y intercepts. Remember, if we can find two points on a graph, we can make the graph. As long as we can point, put two points on there, we can basically connect those dots. So to find the x-intercept, we're going to plug in 0 for y and solve for x. Right now we're just going to get these steps written down and then we will do a few examples together so this makes sense to you all in a, a minute. <clears throat> find the y-intercept, we do the opposite. We plug in 0 for x and solve for y. And then the final step is we graph our intercepts and connect the dots. So let's label these. This is step 1. This is step two, and this is step three. Can I switch step one and two now? What's up? Can I switch step one and two? Again? Yeah, it doesn't matter which order you do them in. So let's open this up, and with this example, we're going to follow these steps. <clears throat> and as Elaine said, it doesn't matter if you do step one first or step two. You just need to find the two intercepts and then you can put them on the graph. But we're going to start with finding the x-intercept. So we're using the same equation as yesterday. 3x plus 5y equals 15. That means our graph should look the same if we do this correctly. And again, this is ax plus by equals c. So let's make more notes than I normally would. We're going to find the x-intercept first. We are going to rewrite this equation and plug in a 0 where the y is. 3x plus 5 times 0 equals 15. What happens when I do 5 times 0? We get a 0. So we can just rewrite this as 3x equals 15. What's my next step if I have 3x equals 15? Yep, divide by 3. And this says x is equal to 5. When we put that 0 in, we are basically saying that the 0 for the y and our xy pair, or the, the in the xy pair, our number is 0, and we just found that the other number is 1, there is 5. So we have 5 comma 0. That's our x-intercept. Now we're going to find our y-intercept. We're going to rewrite the equation, but this time we're going to plug in 0 for the x. So 3 times 0 plus 5y equals 15. x 
3 times 0 is? That leaves us with 5y equals 15. y is equal to 3. So our xy pair is we put in 0 for x and we found 3 for y. So now let's go down and graph this. Again, we just need two points on the graph and we can connect the dots. Our first point is 5 comma 0. Our second point is 0 comma 3. And then we can take our straight edge and draw our line. Yesterday you were given some graph paper. Please pull it out. And if you could open your book to page 73, we're going to do some practice problems from the book today. All over there on that top shelf. If you don't still have the graph paper or didn't get any yesterday, it's over in that corner. You can go grab some. Okay, we're going to practice with problems 15, 16, 17, and 18 that are at the top of page 73. 2x plus 5y equals 10 is problem 15. We're looking for the x and y intercepts, so we're going to take turns plugging in zero. I like to write the ordered pairs to start off. Yep. I want to find what's missing in those two ordered pairs. If I plug in zero for x, What's going to happen to this 2x? It's just going to become 0. If I just cover it up, then I'm looking at the one-step equation, aren't I? What's 5y equals 10? We're going to get 2, aren't we? 10 divided by 5. For the second intercept, if I plug in a 0 for the y, what's going to happen to that 5? So I just cover it up. Yep. So honestly, what we did with this is we showed it, and we showed all of the steps for it. But when these numbers work well together, it's really easy to just do what's often referred to as the cover-up method. I'm covering this up because I'm saying 2 times 0 would be 0 anyway, so I'm just going to ignore it. And then I can just look at that, and there's my one-step equation. 
<laughs> There's a reason I did not have us pull this back out from yesterday. This doesn't work with every standard form equation. Remember this ugly one we started with that had all these fractions in our answer? Picture trying to put in a zero here. Negative 12 divided by 11 would still not end up with a nice number, right? Say that again. Yeah. We're getting, it's not so much the scale of the graph as the numbers that I was talking about. So with this one, we're going to graph it. We've got two points. 0 comma 2 and 5 comma 0 what kind of slope are we going to get with this graph negative. yeah it's going to be negative but we don't have that anywhere in an equation today we're only going to see it when we get it on the graph I want to do one more problem with you and then I'm going to let you guys do some practice. Okay, again, if I plug in 0 for the x, I'm going to have negative 4y is equal to negative 24. What is negative 24 divided by negative 4? Positive 6. And if I plug in a 0 for the y, I'm going to have 3x divided into negative 24. Negative 24 divided by positive 3 would give us negative 8. Now this graph paper is not ideal because it only has up to six by six. So if I want to graph this here, I might count these by two instead and change my scale. So I'm going to say that every line on this is by two. So when I say zero, six, I'm going to go two, four, six. And to get negative eight, two, four, six, eight. And that way I can fit my line easily on this graph. So I'm looking at page 73, and I'm going to have you all continue with some practice here. There are eight graphs on this paper, and we're going to do six more problems. I would like you to do numbers 17 through 22, and then we can come back together and check. Yeah. Hold on, I couldn't hear that. 